Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 113. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook, Magic Tricks 107 to 119. Hey, in this one, we're going to see a great nested if and how to create a loan calculator for a short term loan. Here it is days for the loan, 0 to 30 days, they get charged a rate of 3. 31 to 45, 3.5%, 46 to 90, uh, 5%. Over 90 days is default. Here's the loan initiation date, number of days, and the loan amount. Now, I want to calculate three different interest amounts, but I want to have a label here. And these labels need to change when we change these inputs. You can see, uh, I have a note up here, blue is labels, red is variable data, green are formulas. So I want to, because a lot of times when people build spreadsheets like this, they do their calculations, but they come back and look at it next week, and they don't really understand it because it's not labeled very well. Well, here we're going to go even one step further. We're going to make variable labels, just like we have variable calculating formulas. I'm going to click in the cell. Uh, well, let's do our interest calculation first for the three different lab levels, one, two, three. So equals, equals the um, amount right there, and I'm going to hit F4, F4 to lock it going down, times, and I'm going to click on this first interest rate, which is a relative cell reference, so when we copy it down, it'll move to those, control enter, and then um, copy it down. Now let's make some labels. I'm going to click here and say, this is a concatenating formula uh, with text, so this is a formula that generates text equals, and in quotes, the interest rate is end quote. That's the first part of it. And what is the rate? For this little category, it's 0.3. We're going to use the ampersand. And remember, I have lots of notes up here. There, I have lots of more basic videos about how to do ampersand and the if and all that kind of stuff here. So, But the ampersand joins things. Now, if we click right here, uh, you'll see that formulas never look at formatting. So when I hit enter, you see it says 0.03. Especially if this is unrounded and it has 15 decimals, it'll show all 15 decimals. So I'm going to click here, hit F2. The solution is the text function. The text function takes a number and formats it the way you say. So I'm going to say text, text of that. Now the text needs a value and then a format. Now I want a percentage format, so I'm going to type comma. And the format has to be uh, custom number format from the Format Cells dialog box. I have a great video all about just this function if you want to look up above. In quotes, I'm going to type 0.00% end quote. Remember, that's a custom number format, and it's got to be in quotes, close parentheses. If you just hit Control Enter right now, you can see the interest rate is 3%. That looks good. F2. And now we have to join another text string. Ampersand, quote, if the loan is paid back under end quote. Now, um, you know, I'm I'm a bad speller, and um, if if I enter this text formula, which I do all the time, I'm a teacher and I do make this mistake all the time. If you run spell check, so if I were to go up to review spelling. It says, uh, I say, click yes. It didn't find any errors. But look, we can all see that loan is spelled wrong. The reason why is spell check doesn't check concatenation. So I'm going to click here, hit F2. But spell check works when you're in edit mode. So I'm going to click review, uh, spell, and sure enough, there it found it. All right, um, if the loan is paid back under, and we're going to join one more thing, how many days? That days right there. Ampersand, open quote, space days, period, end quote. Control Enter. And now I'm going to copy this down. Now, it works fine here. The interest rate is 3% if the loan is paid back under four days. But here, it doesn't. The interest rate is 5% if the loan is paid back under 90 days. Oh, it, it did work. Hey, look at that. So under 90 days, it's 5%. Hmm, what was I thinking? Excellent. We have our formulas. Now, let's go down here, and we need to do um, a formula for uh, 
first for the number of days um, that the loan has been outstanding because we need that. So the way you do date math is there's an earlier date and a late date. You always uh, take the later date and subtract the earlier date. As we all know, if you can um, show general format, dates are always the number of days since uh, December 31st, 1899. Same with here, right? I just got rid of all the formatting there. Uh, so if you subtract a later date from an earlier date, um, you get the number of days. That's why they program dates to be actual serial numbers, number of days since a long time ago. I'm going to control ZZ. Now we can do our formula. Equals the later date minus the earlier date, and then enter. Now in earlier versions, when you hit enter, it uh, sucks the format. So you actually have to, for, for example, this is what it would look like in earlier versions. And you're like, what? 121, 1900. That's because the number 21, when you put date format, is uh, January 21st, 1900. So if this is what you see, you have to control 1 and then click on general. All right, now we have our 21. Now we need interest due. And this is going to be our nested if. Equals if this right here is less than. 31, I'm going to click up there. If it's less than 31, then we're going to have this interest. Okay, So that's the value. If it's less than, that's the value if it's true. Now, here's a rule about nested if. You, um, we have one, two, three categories, right? If you start at one end and move through it methodically, um, uh, that's the uh, most efficient way to uh, build a nested if, meaning we're going to say what happens here, then we're going to go on to here and say what happens here. See, if this first one is tr is false, then it's eliminated, right? And then we can go to this one. Let's uh, keep going, and we'll explain that a little bit further. So that's what to put in the cell of true. Now, what if it's false? We have to do another if. If now is this cell less than? 46, right? I used the 31 here less than, right? You could have said less than or equal to 30, but that would have been typing one extra character. So I said less than. But here we got to do less than 46. Now let's figure out um, why we did it this way, right? This is less, this ass is it less than 31. This ass is it less than 46, right? Is this less than 46? Yeah, it is. What about here? Is this less than 46? Yeah, it is. But if you, if this comes out, this number right here is uh, 32. This first part returns false, so then it has to go on to here. However, if it's 21, this returns true, so it never even gets to the rest of the if. That's why building an if from the top to the bottom or reverse from the bottom to the top always uh, is efficient. Now, what if we want, if that's true, we want this interest right here. Otherwise, we type a comma. And see, now it's asking if the value is false. We actually have two more things to put in. We have to put in this interest, but what if they are past the date? We need to put the word default. So now we need one more if. Notice there's four things. We need this, 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 or the word default. If there's four things, you need three ifs. If there were only three things, you need two ifs. All right? If this cell right here is less than or equal to, because we need to um, have our 90 here. You can use that 90 or that 90 right there. I'm going to use that 90. Then what do we want? We want this interest right here. Otherwise, and finally, we get our word default, that has to, which has to be in quotes. Close parenthesis. So that's how to uh, build a nested if. Uh, remember, go top to bottom or bottom to top. Now, that's a, a purple parenthesis, which means it's closing off that one. I'm going to type another parenthesis. And you see, right when you type that parenthesis, it's bold for a second so you can get a visual cue. But we can also look at the color. It's green. Close parenthesis. Now you finally see the black one, so you know you're done. And then Enter. And you can test it. Uh, let's change this date to 9 slash 22. Let's change this to 10 slash 1. Let's change this to 10 slash 22. Uh, let's change this to 11 slash 1. Oh, default. Ooh, I can't spell. Default. What's that mean? I'm going to come here and hit F2. Sorry. I'm going to click here and hit F2. And now I'm going to properly put T. 
Now we're running out of time. We just have one more. Um, put 10 slash 22 here. One more here. We need to add uh, th this amount of interest and the original amount, but we need to take into consideration. Here it is. Is this cell right here equal to the word default? If it is, then put the word from default from that cell. Otherwise, add the interest and the principal and then hit enter. All right, we'll see you next trick.